behind the arc. And this game has been extremely balanced from both of these teams thus far. Zalas Johnson checked back in for Kane Bay. Kane Bay going to that five guard set with Tyler Giles accompanied at that five spot as a double, great double. How about the steal from Avarius Major? And it's going to be a jump ball on the floor. Excuse me. They're actually going to call it travel on the floor on Dante Taylor before Kane Bay was able to jump on it. Said he rolled over with it. So, excuse me, possession will remain with the Cobras. And they've got 42 seconds to work with. See, inbound on the ball is number four, C.J. Dixon, finally able to do so. But great on-ball pressure defense from Justin Britton. They're going to charge him with a foul. His second of the evening. Yeah, he's not happy about that. He did have his hands up. I'll give him that. But you got to move your feet a little bit. And he got him with the body for sure. That'll send the senior, number 22, Tyler Giles. Giles averaging 4.1 points per game, two rebounds. But as we were doing our homework this week, Natalie, our favorite story potentially as we went into it, Coach McKeaton mentioned that Tyler Giles is a guy that is a true representation of our program. They're not trying to just build a couple really good teams, but a great program as Giles was a guy that really had to work, a product of hard work as he's earned this playing time. Didn't play a lot last year, but he has served a huge role on this year's team. Yeah, he's an example for what McKean wants to see in teams down the line. He says he uses him as an example when he's talking to, to younger kids within the program of, look, this is a product of what hard work can do. You don't play that much from the jump, that's fine. You have something to work towards, and that's exactly what Giles has done. Absolutely. You see there, Dante Taylor unable to get the three to go, and thought it was going to be another foul underneath as Jaquel Brown went up to go rebound that over the back of Jordan McKean, but they actually had the ball going over the backboard. So with just 20 to go, Goose Creek leads 24 to 23. Kane Bay expected to hold for the last shot with a chance to take the lead heading into halftime. Capers with a floater, unable to get it to go. With just five to go, a loose ball. Goose Creek bleeding for a timeout with just 2.9 on the clock. And it's going to be a jump ball possession with the Gators. I'm telling you, Natalie, if it's not a contested shot of the rim, it feels <laughs> like these guys are on the floor fighting for a loose ball every 10 seconds, it seems. Yeah, if there was a testament to what this game has been thus far, it is, exact, it is exactly that. Bodies on the ground. No one is getting away with a loose ball. There is just going to be so many people trying to grab that and get a hand on it. You see dates from half court a heave off the top of the backboard. It won't go. But it's been one half. Here from my TV Charleston's Game of the Week High School Hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We got a good one, folks. Potentially a football game. These guys are battling on the floors tonight. It's a 24 to 20 degree lead from Goose Creek here from the Low Country. Welcome back into Mike TV, Charleston High School. Give it a game of the week driven by Cruz Chevrolet. 
It's Goose Creek leading Kane Bay 24 to 23 between the battle of the number five team in the state and the number six team in the state. But here at halftime, each week, David Ayla Law Offices and Riders Law Group is proud to highlight a scholar athlete from each participating school. The student selector will have an opportunity to win a $2,500 scholarship at the end of the season. Over the last seven seasons, David Ayla Law Offices have donated almost $50,000 in scholarships. Tonight's scholar athletes are, well, we're going to start with Goose Creek. The leading scorer for his Goose Creek in the first half, Elijah Dates. He had eight in that first half, but almost just as impressive. How about the 3-3 GPA in the classroom? A top five senior in class 5A. He was an all-region team last year, an all-region team the year before, and he was the low country round ball's most outstanding player. On top of that, though, his community involvement. He's a member of the New Life Christian Fellowship Church and the Youth in the United Abundant Life Community Service Organization. Elijah Dates, an incredible student athlete, our scholar athlete of the week for Goose Creek. And on the other sideline for Kane Bay, it's Miss Samantha Mullen. Take a look at that GPA, folks. A 5-3-1-2. Unbelievable from Samantha Mullen. A four-year varsity basketball letter winner. This year, leading Kane Bay to number 10 in the state. She's also a two-year varsity volleyball letter winner in the community. She's a member of the Beta Club, Key Club, National Honor Society, Moo Alpha Theta here at Kane Bay, and also volunteers as part of a neighborhood events, community volunteer services. Shout out to you, Samantha Mullen. I didn't know a GPA could go that high. That's truly incredible. Thank you to David Allen Law for scholarships of the week. We'll be back here with an interview at halftime here with Kane Bay's principal. Welcome back to Kane Bay High School with Goose Creek Gators hold a one point lead over the Cobras. Such a great game. We thank you for joining us here tonight. And joining me now along the sidelines is the principal of Kane Bay High School, Tiffany Brown. How are you doing tonight? Thanks for joining us. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Thank you so much. Well, an exciting atmosphere here tonight. We've done this for several weeks at this point. I have to say. Kane Bay might be the loudest gym we have been at this time of the year. What does that mean about having an environment? What does that mean to you about being a place that so many students and parents want to gravitate to Friday nights? That is what we strive for. We want everyone to feel like they belong here. Um, we work really hard to promote positive school culture and school spirit amongst our students. And I think that is demonstrated here tonight. And how important is that? in your position to have an athletic department that students want to flock to, that they're proud to be a Cane Bay Cobra? It's very important, um, not only for athletics, but just school in general. I want all of our kids to feel like they have a home here um, and that they fit in. And the crowd that we have tonight shows that our athletic department is doing that. Um, and also, we had a spirit week this week, um, sort of like homecoming, but it's coming home since it's basketball season. And so that is where a lot of the support has come from as well. Nice. And I know we did, we did honor those seniors ahead of the game. To have so much support for, for the seniors and, and watching them grow and mature throughout their times here at Cane Bay High School, as the principal, what is really the goal to see these students, I mean, mature and go on to their next phase in life, I'm sure? It's really exciting. I want to develop great human beings. Um, it's not just about what they're able to do while they're within the walls of Cane Bay High School, but what they're able to do once they leave here. I think that's the true measure of our success, um, and so that's what we strive for. 
And sp by speaking with head coach Sean McKeon, it sounds like that is something that he works to, to exemplify as a coach. He talks a lot about commitment, being committed to, to a team, to the brothers around you in this case scenario, and being committed to to just throwing 100% effort into what it is you're doing, and that stretches beyond the basketball court and something that he wants to see them take with them, whether that's go to college and start a career. How important is it to have someone like him at the forefront of a program like this? Uh, it's extremely important. He's not only um, our head basketball coach, but he also teaches here. Um, and I think that's important when kids see that person in the classroom, but they also see what they're able to do and how they're able to promote them outside of academics. Lots of great things going on here at Cane Bay High School. Thank you so much, Tiffany Brown, president or president, principal, there we go, <laughs> of Cane Bay High School. Thanks for joining us at this halftime. We will see you in just a few minutes for second half action. Welcome back live into my TV Charleston's game of the week brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. It's the number six Cane Bay Cobras playing host to the number five Goose Creek Gators. Just a one point margin. But Natalie, we saw that first half. This thing's going to come down the wire. Exactly. And what more can you ask for? Both of these teams, strong presence from the jump. You see it right there with the dunk from Gabriel White. But both of these teams exchanging blows. No one's really garnered so much momentum. So it's been interesting to see if one team can really string together a few possessions to put themselves ahead of the other in the second half. Absolutely, in that first half, leading scorer of the entire game. See that guy right there, Chauncey Capers. He led the way with 10. Elijah Dates over the Goose Creek side, he had eight to boot. But in this second half, look for some of the other key pieces that we talked about, players to watch to really come to life. Jordan McKean, Justin Britt. It's going to be a fun second half, folks. Make sure you come back and catch us here live here at Cane Bay High School.
Welcome back in my TV Charleston brought to you by David A. Law Offices, your client focused and community driven injury firm. Jack DeLong shall sit courtside with Natalie Spala, a top 10 matchup, aspirations, and an opportunity to win a region championship. It's been everything that we've expected, Natalie. Exactly. And what more could you ask for at this point? Both teams really proving tonight why they are the fifth and sixth teams in the state, respectively. So when it comes to what this game is going to come down to down the stretch, I'm going to go defensively. Both of these teams have proven that they have the capabilities of scoring and scoring in several aspects of the game. But it might be those one or two turnovers or who's going to grab that defensive board and, and the little things like that are going to mean so much down the stretch. Absolutely. I think it's going to come down to that shot that we just saw. Saw Justin Britt rallying the troops, his youngsters, his fellow veteran seniors around him, listening to the insight that the senior who's just clawed and fought his way to get back on the court after suffering an injury earlier this year. I think it's going to be a guy like him. He's going to be a guy like Jordan McKean. He's averaging 16.4. That's dang near tops in the low country. It's going to be these two seniors, I think, really putting on a show. Both of these coaches pleading for their seniors to really go out and get it. Look for a big second half out of both those guys. I think so, too. And one of the things Blake Hall spoke to us about regarding our first broadcast game of the year, which was Somerville Goose Creek, is how does his team respond when things go sideways? And if you look back to that Somerville game, it wasn't an outcome that they wanted. They ended up losing by, I believe, around 20, 30 points there. And that's not something you really see from a team that is ranked in the state ranking. So he says their ability to, to jump back from losses like that, how they respond when, when things go sideways or don't go exactly according to plan, that is going to be what makes this team either makes them or breaks them down the stretch of the season. You're spot on, Natalie. He kept mentioning it to us in an interview with him this week. Embrace being uncomfortable. Tight ball game on the road. Hostile environment. Kudos to Cane Bay Nation. They've got a sweet student section tonight as Chauncey Capers is able to knock down the second of the Holy City heating and air free throws. This is what you you know work out for. This is what you thrive for. Moments and opportunities like this is Capers able to knock it down and even the score with just 7.40 to go in the third. A nice backdoor cut. Britt unable to corral. A loose ball. Kane Bay is going to be upset with that one, but boy, did Britt take a big shot. Is they're going to get that foul on the big fella, Jaden Diaz Jones, his third. Is Britt really happy to see him get back to his feet? Yeah, and you can see it there in his face too. You're just you hold your breath when you see a player like that coming back from injury and something like that happens. You're glad to see him get up by himself and, and make his way to the bench. You just hope that he's he's okay. He looks to be okay. So we'll have to see as he holds his knee there. Just a really scary sight to see. We mentioned a lot of praise for this kid coming into the season. So we see Dates, big three, make it 11. God, has he been fun to watch play tonight. The moment, not too big for Elijah Dates. He lives for it. But we think about Justin Britt. We hope that he can get back out here healthy as he's really worked his tail off to play in games like this one tonight. But the move from McKean. Taylor may be trying to draw the charge, but it's going to be Chauncey Capers. He wants an ISO. High ball screen. He likes the mismatch. Capers trying to look for a, a lane that he likes, but defense making it hard. McKean on the drive, unable to get it to go. Potts with a rebound. He looks to turn into transition. Dates will slow it down, pass out of the double. I'm going to corner three from Dante Taylor. Unable to get it to go, but it's the big fella down low. Gabriel White, he's going to head to the line and knock down two. Holy City hitting an air free throws. Potts, such a fun player to watch right there. The kick to the corner for Dates. Dates might just be the one to, to take this game into his hands, Jack. I couldn't agree more. Elijah Dates, a three-level scorer, but I think this team takes on the identity of Elijah Dates. Ooh, Justin Britt leads by example. I think Dates is the guy that can really rally this team. 
talk a little trash. I think his team thrives off his energy. I think he, yeah, exactly like you said, he is the one that sets the tone, and that is exactly word for word what head coach Blake Hall mentioned to us. He needs to be the best guy on the court, him and Bray. They're the ones who, who again, set the tone. We're starting to, starting to sound like broken records over here, but it's true. Something to keep note of as well. That was Jordan McKean's second foul. Not necessarily in foul trouble quite yet, but he'll look to play maybe a, a bit more cautiously with just six to go in the third quarter. A lot of ball game left. McKean on the dribble drive. Kick to C.J. Dixon. Bang! His first three of the night, Dixon. C.J. Dixon, a guy that's averaging nine points per game. His first three looking to have a big second half is on the other end, Shane Potts. Looks to get two back quickly, and he's going to be fouled. And I love this. Take two, three dribbles into the paint, strong dribbles. Defense collapses even just a little bit, or at least keeps their eye on that ball. So then you've got a guy ready to knock down a huge shot when they need it most, and that is C.J. Dixon getting his name on the score sheet. Potts able to knock down the first of the Holy City, heating an air, free throws. Holy City in air, we provide solutions for every season. You know, Kane Bay earlier this season had to find a solution to a broken backboard. Courtesy <laughs> of number four, C.J. Dixon. If you're a high school hoop junkie like ourselves, you probably saw it. It went trending viral on social media. Dixon during a fast break drill during practice, luckily enough had assistant coach, I believe Coach McKean said it was assistant coach Mike Ford had his phone out to see how his team would react in this certain drill. Well, Dixon took off and ripped the backboard down with him. Glass <laughs> shattered. Took him about a week to get a new backboard piled in. Crazy stuff. Yeah, that was something we just had to ask head coach Sean McKean about. He said actually this has happened last year too. So it was kind of a best case scenario. They had ordered, they come in pairs, of course, when you order backboard. So they had an extra laying around. So when this had happened a few weeks back, they were thankfully in a, in a good situation to replace it pretty easily. Absolutely. Nice dribble drive by Dixon. McKean unable to get it go. And it's pops in transition again. Almost drags that back foot. Gets a little too greedy with it. A nice steal from Zylas Johnson. That's a statistic I wanted to talk about now in our homework this week. How about Kane Bay averaging 13 and a half steals per game as McKean. Nice defense from Justin Britt, but we saw the steal from Zylas Johnson. Now they got three or four guys that are all averaging two to three steals per game. 13 per game at the high school level is insanity. <laughs> Kudos to their speed and athleticism on the defensive end. Yeah, that just shows you the hard work that these guys put in. Uh-oh. Britt upset with the call. McKean went right into the chest of him. We're going to see here. What you think, now? You know, I, I definitely don't think it was a hand, but a body perhaps. Yeah, it's a tough one. Maybe a little into him. you got to be 150% straight up if you don't want a ref to call that, but... From certain angles, you know, it's I think, pretty clean. I think it's one of those situations where both players have the right to that airspace. Britt does a great job of staying straight up. But the minute that that official sees the hands come down, right. even just a little bit. But in Britt's defense, does a great job of keeping it clean. But there's a read that Jordan McKean averages 16.4 points per night. A talented scorer. Scorers are not a scorer. Oftentimes, they do a great job being able to see the officials make their way to the free throw line. McKean unable to get the second to go. I believe it was knocked out of bounds by Tyler Giles. Possession to Goose Creek, but Kane Bay maybe with a little full court pressure here. Yeah, we haven't seen much of this, this type of pressure from either of these teams tonight, and I think that's because they haven't had many opportunities to press. These guys get out so quickly, it's hard to kind of slow a team down when they're already halfway down the court. A track meet would be an understatement. <laughs> you see a nice ball fake. How about the dish from the freshman? Come on. The and one finish from Lavarius Major. That's the second time that I that those two have been on the same page. But goodness gracious, how about the look from Jaquel Brown? His ability to get to a spot to make a pass like that is equally as impressive as 
his no-look pass. Just a thing of beauty right there. He catches Tyler Guy will sleep. I don't blame him. He never looked. It was a true no-look pass. He dumps it off. You can see why so many are raving over the true freshman, Jaquel Brown. 5'11". He's got bounce, too, folks. Don't let him fool you. He's got the ability to windmill dunk. But his vision on the floor for a freshman, top-notch. Yeah, he keeps defenses honest at the very least because you cannot lose sight of your defender when you've got a guy like that on the floor. Major unable to get the and one finish as we see the big fella Zaire Williams checking in for Kane Bay. If you notice him, it's not Max in 6'7, 220. But if you notice this guy, Jaquel Brown looking for his fifth assist tonight. Shane Potts unable to get it to go. Kane Bay heading the other way. The team's going to take it baseline. Really nice defense from Potts, though. Capers in a little two-man game with the big fella Zaire Williams we mentioned. Capers gets the spot, pulls the jumper. It's 9 o'clock on a Friday. Bank's open, folks. Bank is open. Wow. Three, I have four. no words for that one, Jack. <laughs> I do. When you're hot, you're hot. Chauncey Capers has got 12, which is 3.30 to go here in the third quarter. Goose Creek leads 32-30. to 30. King Bay out of the run looking to tie it up. The team saves it baseline. In a low country, crawl space, fast break. CJ Dixon looks to take advantage. This place is ready to erupt, and it's unable to go as Elijah Dates gets the rebound and Goose Creek now in transition. And shots at Capers with the most electric play in sports draws the charge. And it's going to be Shane Potts' second. But folks, don't go anywhere. Chauncey Capers sure is it. He's got 12 already, feeling himself. We're going to take our media break here. Make sure to come back and check us out. Goose Creek leads 32 to 30. Welcome back into my TV, Charleston High School Hoops, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. You take a look at head coach Blake Hall. He's got his guys geared up. Just 11 minutes away from a potential region championship as his team leads just a small margin between the number six team in the state, Kane Bay, playing host to number five team in the state, Goose Creek. Jack DeLong shall sit in courtside with Natalie Spala. Natalie. There's been no lack there of fireworks tonight. <laughs> no question. And I only think we're, we're not just getting started because we're wrapping up the third quarter, but you know what I mean in terms of that excitement, Jack. It's been exciting from really the start of this game. Started <laughs> off with a dunk. <laughs> Absolutely. You saw the rebound there from Gabriel White. He got it going early with a huge dunk on a nice find from Jaquel Brown. See Jaquel Brown heads to the sideline as Justin Britt checks in for him. But now I think it's been Jaquel Brown's vision that stead fast 
in this ballgame tonight is giving Goose Creek a small lead so far. I think so too, and whether that's making those no-look passes right under the basket or really immediately when he comes away with a rebound, his ability to look at the entire floor, see who's up in front of him, pushes the ball and he's able to get a, a great shot and start off possessions very well by just his ability to see the floor. As he looks to check in at the scorer's table now alongside of Isaac Smalls. Jordan McKean looks to get things going on the defensive end. Dante Taylor's done a great job defending him this evening. Tyler Giles from the top of the key. That's a deep three. That's five on eight from Tyler Giles. Downtown. Kane Bay back on top, which we haven't seen really at all here tonight. Goose Creek's held the lead the entire game. This is Kane Bray's first lead of the evening. Chauncey Capers almost comes away to steal, but it's Elijah Dates underneath the basket. And they're gonna, they're gonna get the foul on C.J. Dixon as we take a look back at the last three from Giles. You know, we've seen highlights all night long, but if you're making a case for play of the game, getting your team up for the first time all day, down the stretch, it might just be it right there, that, there, Jack. I think if you look at both ball clubs and the trust and confidence that both of these great coaches have instilled in these guys, we've seen kids from 35. That would look like dang near a 40-footer. <laughs> no lack of trust and their players and student athletes from Coach Hall and Coach McKean as that three was way deep as Elijah Dates was able to knock down the second of the Holy City heating and air free throws to tie this thing back up as Jaquel Brown's going to check in for him. 12 on the night for Elijah Dates. Matches leading scorer Chauncey Capers. It's been those two leading the way. McKean tries to thread the needle. Justin Britt there with a nice steal. How about Isaac Smalls though? The junior. Crawl space, big time. Two West Shore home points in the bank there. He picks the pocket of Justin Britt. Slams it home on the other end. How about Justin Britt with the answer though? Yeah, he's trying to relax this crowd over here that is on their feet behind us, Jack. They're still got their jaws on the floor from that last play, but Justin Britt says, hey, quiet down, tying this one up back up. And rightfully so. I got goosebumps over here, Natalie. Talking about a back and forth affair. This has lived up to the track meet it is as Justin Britt looks for a three ball. Unable to get it to go, but it's Amlet, the offensive rebound. Kick back, Shane Potts. Boom! Ice. And that is because of Amlet working to keep that possession alive. Plays like that. Huge. They're going to become an even bigger emphasis down the stretch of we enter the fourth quarter, Jack. How about Capers? A little out of control underneath. A nice block from Gabriel White. I'm telling you right now, you can see the student section there. Shane Potts hits three. Ice cold. Justin Britt, he's talking that top. This place <laughs> is starting to really get it going. And what a great play this was. Student section still on their feet after this play. Great stuff. Rightfully so. Isaac Smalls, his coach, had mentioned he's like an energizer bunny. He plays a little spastic at times. That plays to his advantage. You saw there in Justin Britt's chest for 84 feet. Never a doubt. Just a junior, not fearful of the big time senior who's got college offers. That play had this place bumping. Whew, gives us a chance to catch our breath a little bit. Less than 20 seconds in this third quarter, Jack. Goose Creek leads 38 to 35. Kane Bay able to reclaim the lead for the first time we had mentioned tonight. Shane Potts, that big time three, gets them back on top. But Natalie, as we enter this fourth quarter, I don't really know what to expect. I don't either. I know That's the beauty of basketball. Go up, we teams love are going to go up and down. But <laughs> I think we're spoiled and maybe a little entitled in the sense that I think this has got to be the best game in the entire state here tonight. Two top 10 teams at the 5A level. And they have shown out from the jump. Yeah, there's a lot of people in this gym that are feeling how we're feeling, Jack. 
Capers with just 15 to go, down three, looking to tie it up, heading into the fourth quarter. We'll look to hold for the last shot. Zylas Johnson working on Laverius Major. Jordan McKean, top of the key. Three, two, fade away, no good. Dates with the rebound. The full court heave, and he got it! He got it! Deuce Creek goes next, but it looks like the officials are waving it off. Dates is besides himself, laughing from the full court heave. He got it to go, but the officials have waved it off. And they were quick to wave that one off, too. The beauty of us, <laughs> we, get to, we get to have a little bit of an instant replay this right is here. A, this is as much... Point five on the clock. It's pretty close. From that angle, it may have looked like it was off. But he banks it home. This is where I wish it was a college court and we had, you know, the lights on the backboard. Folks, you'd be crazy to leave now. It's going to be a barn burner at the end of this one. Isaac Smalls with the big jam is going to take us to the fourth quarter. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back into Cane Bay High School. It's Mike TV Charleston's High School Hoops Game of the Week brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers. You got a friend of the car business, Jack DeLongshaw, sitting courtside with Natalie Spala. Well. <laughs> We've been spoiled here tonight, Jack. We have been spoiled. <laughs> we were actually showed a look in between breaks as well. Our incredible crew and staff here had a camera angle from underneath the basket. It was certain that, yes, that ball had not left Elijah Dates' hand before it left. But an unbelievable shot from Dates, who's already got 12 tonight. The senior putting on a show here on TV, folks. But boy, have these two top 10 teams in the state, they're clawing and fighting for that region championship. And kudos to these refs tonight because they've had a hard job. They've been all over it too as Gates unable to get it go and it's major with two offensive rebounds. Smalls pokes it loose. It's Chauncey Capers on the run. Smart Just, move by Capers to, to back that one up. Justin Britt was in full force ready to swipe that or do whatever. So goes to show Capers. Smart guy. Capers, really shifty player. A nice crossover move to shake Britt, but they kick it out to Johnson. Johnson trying to free up his big guy. They've got a mismatch down low on Jaquel Brown. Johnson likes the one-on-one -on -one look anyways. But the sweeping left hand from Zyrus Johnson. He's got six. Well, he's got three defenders right there in the paint, but he somehow makes that work, so kudos to you, young man. That was awesome. Just a one-point lead. The senior, Justin Britt, looks to slow things down. It's been Isaac Smalls' duty trying to slow him, and they're going to get him with a foul there as Justin Britt's going to head to the free throw line. That's going to be Isaac Smalls' second, but Britt, he was our player to watch come to the game. Just five points so far this evening. But, yep, yeah, they're going to get him. Smalls caught him on the elbow. 
as he's going to head to the line to look to knock down two holy city heating and air free throws here and Britt, like we mentioned has been out for the majority of the year Torres meniscus in the first week of practice but he tweaked it last game or two games ago he actually didn't play their last game coach hall said he'd only be 75 percent tonight i don't know what kind of thought that was because this guy looks great there's a reason that colleges across the state of South Carolina are beckoning for young Justin Britt's talents as we see Dante Taylor checking in an incredible leader for Goose Creek coach Hall had mentioned in our last matchup against Somerville and we were so excited about it, especially coming into this matchup he's had seven of eight of these guys since their sixth grade year they've truly built a family out here at goose creek testament to what coach hall's program has built is we're going to get a foul on the other end on xylus johnson we're going to get that one on jaquel brown his second had it in the act of shooting as xylus johnson heads the line averaging six points per night 3.7 rebounds well over pace to meet those numbers as Johnson's knocked down the first of the Holy City eating their free throws. He's now got seven as we see CJ Dixon checking back in. We've seen it all. A full court shot, a couple dunks. Is it too much to ask for CJ Dixon to maybe break another backboard? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I'd love to say yes, but then where would that leave us? I don't know. Maybe Stunned. old school. Well, yeah. Well, no, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking more so for, hey, we've got a chance to win a region championship tonight as Goose Creek leads 40-39 with just 6.15 to go. He breaks another basketball, backboard. we got no way to finish this game. Do we go three on three and a half court set? How's that work? <laughs> no comment. I actually have speechless. no idea. I mean, that would be exciting for us. We'll stick around for that for sure. Absolutely. They're going to get that foul underneath on C.J. Dixon, his second foul. It'll send Gabriel White to the free throw line. And Gabriel White, once again, keeping a possession alive, and he gets to go to the free throw line as a result of all of that effort, effort that matters so much when you've got about six minutes left in a game and you're only up one. Make that two. See Justin Britt. Quick break. He'll check in for Jaquel Brown. With no Isaac Smalls on the floor for Kane Bay, it'll be interesting to see who will match up with the big 6'5", Justin Britt. The question is, though, as we look into the backcourt, the two senior guards, Jordan McKean and Elijah Dates, talking their talk. I think that's going to be the matchup down the stretch that everyone's going to have their eyes on. Dante Taylor. Switches off on the big fella. Capers gets the elbow, unable to get it to go. Another rebound from Shane Potts. He's been a menace on the glass tonight. Dates kicks it back to Britt. Britt takes off, and that's a scary fall, folks. Oh, that's a scary fall. The foul is going to be on Jaden Diaz Jones. Two really physical players that can really get up off the ground. Oh, Diaz gosh. Jones didn't want to give up an easy one, but boy, Britt. He was looking to try to put someone on a poster as he takes a scary fall. And you see him grabbing that knee of his. The trainers are going to make their way out to the court now. Uh, you see it in his face, too, just wincing in pain. Head athletic trainer here at Kane Bay is going to head out and take a look at him as we wish nothing for the best so that man can get up off his feet. He's done so much to try to fight his way back into this lineup battle injury after injury but you can see here everyone on the floor tonight giving it our all for the chance to win a championship Natalie speaking of championships we talked to coach Hall we talked to Chris McKean looking to go two for two in his first two seasons with the raging championships here in the low country coach Hall we asked him about hey opportunity to control your own destiny with just one win on Friday night his answer quick and straight to the point Region and state championships are for kids in the community. My job is to make sure these young men are ready for life when they leave our program. For that young man, Justin Britt, he'll be ready to leave this program head high as he takes a nasty fall here. So happy to see him get back on his feet. 
Yeah, and love for the guy standing next to you is another one of those things that Hall preaches to his guy, and you love every, to see every single one of those Goose Creek Gators get up, shake his hand, give him a pat on the back. Glad to see he's okay. We see Brandon Burgess, because it was an injury, they're able to check anybody in to take the free throws for him. It's going to be the senior Brandis, Bur Brandon Burgess. The southpaw knocks down the first of the Holy City heating and air free throws. Natalie Burgess, with, again, similar to a guy like uh, Isaac Smalls, or excuse me, Tyler Giles. Burgess with a really incredible story and in how he's been able to progress throughout his four years here for Goose Creek. Yeah, this is a guy who has a great story off of the court. He's never missed a day of school. What? A 12th grader who has never missed a day of school in his life. Paul says that is just a testament to the player, of the commitment he has to this program. McKean unable to get the layup to go. How about Burgess? We were talking about him. Yep. His nose is twitching. How about the three ball from the south, Paul? Making an impact immediately in the game. That's five points in just 35 seconds from Brandon Burgess. And it's funny because his head coach, Blake Hall, said he's a guy that gets people fired because they don't have him on a scouting report. And you're seeing exactly why people end up without jobs at the end of their day. Oh, Jordan McKean with the answer, a much needed answer, trying to get his guys back into this one. Down five now, Jack. McKean up to seven. He's a volume shooter. He averages 16 tonight. Look for him to really start chunking him up here in the fourth quarter. His pops head coach, Sean McKean, he loves that he loves to distribute. But here late, look for him to try to take over. It's Silas Johnson on the run. Burgess playing on ball defense. Capers in the corner. He's going to go by Taylor. Capers. He's going to draw a foul. And it's going to be on Gabriel White. He's first. Such a hard guy to defend, Capers. We've talked about it all night long, but I can't get enough of Brandon Burgess. Off the bench, the most probably five pivotal points of the night yet, Jack. True. And then we got Jordan McKee, I mean, doing what he does. We expect that from him. But Brandon Burgess, you mentioned, never missed a day in his entire public school career, 12 straight years. Coach Hall mentioned, you know, his freshman year, undersized, didn't know if he was going to make a JV team. But he's like, how do you cut a kid like this? He's done everything that we asked for. And year in and year out, he has gotten significantly better and better each year. Coach Hall mentioned in a game earlier this season in the round ball, Burgess came and checked in, knocked down four huge threes. Never a complaint whether he didn't start or not. And everyone I was in the basketball community, it doesn't matter who starts the game, it's who finishes. And Burgess, with five quick points, you can see he's on the floor in the fourth quarter for a reason. Exactly. He's come out and earned it. And they just subbed four guys in, four guys out. The one guy who stays on the court, and for good reason. Capers able to knock down two free throws there. He's up to 14. There's Justin Britt having some fun with the student section there as C.J. Dixon picks him up for court. Brick shakes the defender. A nice move to the basket. Unable to get it to go. And he's going to come up hobbling. Oh, folks, we hate to see that. This is the third time we've seen him on the floor, and you can see the frustration from Justin Britt. We don't know if it's a cramp. We know, obviously, issues with his meniscus in the past. It looks like they're massaging him a bit. But it looks to be that same spot. So that is cause for concern for sure. Absolutely. We're, we're hoping that it's just a cramp as those trainers are on the sidelines working on him. We had mentioned he has worked on that knee before. As you can see Coach Hall helping to get him off the floor. It's going to be Shane Potts checking in for the senior. Jordan McKee on the run, though. Nice playoff, two feet, kicks to the corner. Silas Johnson, his second three of the night. He's up to 11. Such a savvy play from the senior, Jordan McKean, to kick to the corner. And Johnson makes him beat. Kane Bay cuts the lead to one. On the other end, though, it's Jaquel Brown. The sweet finish for the West Shore home. Two points in the paint. A sweet left-handed move. Need a chance to catch my breath over here, Jack. 
We expect nothing left for these teams with just 3.20 to go. Goose Creek leads. Another three from the corner. Unable to get it to go. As they're going to get a, I believe that ball, maybe. Nope, we're going to get foul on the floor. It's going to be on number 22, Tyler Dyes. He's fourth. Bro, just 3.10 to go. You see the senior trying to will his way to a region championship. Three's up, baby. 3.15 to go. <laughs> Who's Chevrolet? How about take a look at Justin Britt? The student section <laughs> messing with him there, but good to see him back on his feet as you see him chowing down on a nice little dill pickle. I was going to say, if you're not thirsty, I hope you got water next hey, to you. All major athletes know <laughs> that when dealing with dehydration, there's nothing better than pickle juice. So really excited to see for Justin Britt, who's battled with injuries year round. That his pickle will hopefully get him back in the ball game. Because you know that Goose Creek needs them as they lead by four with just 3.16 to go. As Elijah Dates extends his scoring, he's got 13. He has willed Goose Creek to this lead tonight. Make it 14. Two courtesy of Holy City Heating and Air. See Justin Britt having some fun with it on the sidelines as well. Chauncey Capers. Doing his best. Frees up Tyler Giles down low. They're going to get the foul on Lavarius Major. His second chance for Giles to go to the line and try to cut this lead in half. Yeah, and that play is brought to you by the guy we've been talking about all night long, Chauncey Capers. He almost makes you, like, look to your left, look to your right, like keep going back and forth because your eyes just can't even keep up with him. He's so fun to watch. Coach McKean, what line for those watching at home? This three headed monster of senior guards. They're all such a hybrid blend of guards. Starting with his son, Jordan McKean. He's destined to be an all region potential all state player. But Chauncey Capers is a kid alongside of McKean, who they have actually both been offered by USC Buford. As Giles knocks down both free throws, he extends his scoring efforts to seven. But both of these guards with USC Buford offers is you see why right there. A high IQ play from Chauncey Capers. As he steals it, tries to get a timeout. Head official on the floor actually gets a jump ball before it. Yeah, so it looks like Dates was trying to get his guy. Uh, just a little bit of a slip. He says, hey, come get this ball, come get this ball. But Chauncey Capers says, and good job by Dates too, kind of boxing Capers out there, unable to get it, but. Goose a little slip of the hand. Cane Bay unable to take advantage of the turnover. And Goose Creek gets one on their own. See Dates bringing it up. It's a one-on-one -on -one action with Jordan McKean. Dates to Potts. Goose Creek leads 51 to 48 with just 2.30 to go. Cane Bay playing swarming defense, but it's Gabriel White. The and one finish. Nope. 
unable to get it to go. He'll head to the line. And Tyler Giles knows it. That was his fifth and final. As they'll see Isaac Smalls checking back in for Kane Bay. As Gabriel White will look to head to the line. Yeah, this rim over here on the Goose Creek side has been a little bit of a problem for them in this second half. I know Justin Britt has had a few hard tries to the basket that just haven't rattled in. It's a little frustrating when you're a guy that does so much work to get to the basket to essentially lay it in easily. Hopefully he'll be able to capitalize here as he gets to the free throw line. See Tyler Giles there. Got his head down. Nothing to have your head down, young man. Giles averaging 4.1 points per game, two rebounds per game. We talked about such a representation of this program that uses it for his young guys. Hey, this is what developmental progress looks like in a young player. Giles finishes with seven points tonight as he fouls out with just 230 to go. Great night from him. He's white. Knocks down the free throw. He's got five. Goose Creek leads 52 to 48 as Jordan McKean looks to enter double digit scorings on his own. He's got seven. It's his team trails by four. But it's Capers off the dribble again. Ah, that's one of those plays where, you know, you almost want a one tough dribble, lay it in, get yourself the right angle to lay it in off the, the backboard to get that one in easily. Absolutely. It's going to be one that Zylus Johnson has nightmares about, one he's usually finishing. But right. the pass from Jaquel Brown, you see Potts there. He was ready to take off. They're going to get the foul on Chauncey Capers, his first, and Potts will have the opportunity to go to the line and try to push this lead to six points. This feed throw is brought to you by Holy City hitting an air. That one clashes off the front rim. Lead remains at four. Kind of that point in the game, Natalie, where each team start counting possessions. Right, 100%. And we knew it was going to come down to these little things, their ability to, to rebound, prevent those second and third chance opportunities, prevent teams from going on runs. So far, both of these teams have done a decent job of doing that, limiting the other team, getting ahead four, five, six points. They've kept it relatively close, and that's why it's been such an exciting game for us here tonight. But down the stretch right now with a, a little bit of a lead here for the Goose Creek Gators, we'll have to see if they can uh, hold on to it. Absolutely. A five-point lead. We're going to take a look at our final matchup. What? It's Colleton County at Lucy Beckham. 4A. It's been an incredible ride on behalf of... Natalie Spall and myself. It's been an incredible slate. A huge shout out to all of our sponsors who are able to make these games possible. The best crew and staff from the state of South Carolina that puts on an incredible broadcast so that these incredible student athletes have the opportunity to show their stellar standout. And Natalie, as we wrap things up, with just two games to go. The overall theme from all coaches is hey, we need a lot more respect on basketball in the low country. I think all of these teams have shown that they've got they deserve that respect. 100 percent and, and that's the beauty of really being in the position to broadcast games like this is because there is so much talent here in the low country so much that i think and the, what our co these coaches have told us kind of goes unnoticed when you look at other areas of the state that garner some more attention so if at the very least we can put that on a silver platter for the people of the low country to take a look at then by all means because there's a lot a lot of talent here jack Absolutely. Kane Bay wanted the full timeout. Let's see what they've got drawn up. It's C.J. Dixon dishing out to Isaac Smalls. Got to imagine they get their stellar seniors. Jordan McKean involved here late. It's Capers off the dribble. A floater and a charge taken by Jaquel Brown. That's Capers second, but a high IQ player. Yeah, you can see him smirking. He set up for that charge early. And Chauncey Capers doing a great job of grabbing that defense and pulling it out so it's hard to defend and creates himself a great lane. But Jaquel Brown, the defense in a huge play for this team with 139 to go. Absolutely. And I'm telling you right now, we saw the big Gabriel White dunk. It's charges taken like that that have got Coach Blake Hall fired up. That's a pure indictment to his team's program, what he's been able to build in the last decade. Truly an incredible play and could be a huge momentum swing as we take a look at our promotional considerations here late. A huge thank you to all of our sponsors that are able to make these games possible. Crew Chevrolet, David Hill Office, West Shore Home, Holy City Heating and Air, Willow Gray. 
All-American Awards. We're going to give out one really pretty award tonight to our player of the game. And Low Country Crawl Space is finally. Natalie, just a minute, 39 to go, a five-point lead. Goose Creek's rock. What's Kane Bay got to do to cut this lead in half? Try to find a way to grasp that lead back. You know, I want to say give it to those senior guys that we have been talking about all night long. Jordan McKean. Chauncey Capers, but I love their ability to get to the paint and then kick it out to a shooter And we've, we've it's called many names along that three-point line tonight Jack who can knock down shots I think get that defense out make Goose Creek play a lot of area Drive to the basket how Capers has done all night long and then find a shooter who's able to knock down a shot When it matters most which is right now Jack truly you see a face there on the Kane Bay sidelines. He's not going to stand up. I thought it was going to be Landon Davis, but it is it's still going to be number 12, Isaac Smalls, accompanying the rest of the starting lineup for Kane Bay. Is a nice outlet play from Goose Creek. Gabriel White on the other end can't get it to go. Dante Taylor with the offensive rebound. And it's going to be Kane Bay possession. A brilliant play call from Coach Blake Hall. A great pass from Elijah Dates. You can see they were able to execute. Day, uh, White just wasn't able to finish. This place might have exploded if they were able to pull that off. I don't know. It's McKean on the other end. How about Silas Johnson for three? Short, but the rebound from Isaac Smalls. Such a gritty play from the junior. We talked about it. His coach said he plays spastic. But spastic in all the right plays. That's a huge offensive rebound. Big time play to try to cut it to one possession. His coach also says he's trying to bulk him up a little bit in the weight room. Just hasn't worked. But the way he muscled that ball away from three guys down there in the paint, well done. Absolutely. Well done. He's able to knock down the first. That was the 17th foul on Goose Creek, so just a one and one there. You also see for Goose Creek, Justin Britt checked back in. It's going to be Britt, Dates, Potts, Brown, and White for Goose Creek here in the final stretch. And for Kane Bay, it's going to be Dixon, Johnson, Capers, McKean, and Smalls. Smalls able to cut it to three. The junior with a huge offensive rebound to cut it to one possession with just a minute and 21 to go. This Ma one's not over till it's over, and I think over will be... Granted, 0-0 zero, zero on the on the <laughs> clock right here because anything can happen up until that point. Now, I've got goosebumps over here. We knew coming <laughs> into this one, you know, our hook, right? We didn't need to tell everyone why you needed to watch. You just needed to see the two names. Kane uh -huh. Bay, number six in the state, hosting number five in the state, Goose Creek. Winner of tonight's game, controls their own destiny to win a region championship. Yeah, this was one of those games where kind of the story wrote itself. We didn't need to try to find different storylines, try to make this one interesting. No, this one was point blank and simple. But aside from the storylines, this game has lived up to everything that we were expecting. It's one thing to have the storylines of things not pan out down the stretch. But for this to be a three-point game with 121 left with region implications on the line, I mean, thank you to both of these teams. A little miscommunication. How about the Euro? Are you kidding me, Chauncey Capers? That Euro is as sweet and silky smooth. That's a nasty move for number two. A little miscommunication on the inbound, and Capers makes him pay. Yes, this is worst case scenario right now. I'm not sure if. I mean, he. It looked like Jaquel Brown was open in the spot that he was open in. Of course, not the spot that Dates initially thought he was going to. He saw him cutting. But Chauncey Capers, that is not the guy you want picking up that ball because you know exactly what he is going to do with it. And that is put it in the hoop. You know, we talk about the backcourt for Kane Bay. Jordan McKean, 5'10", Chauncey Capers, 5'9", Alex Johnson, just 5'10". An undersized team, a lot of noise from those three. A lot of noise from this gym right now. I was just right going to say, talking about it. noise, we got a cheer off going As this on. This place has come to life. See Goose Creek student section showing a lot of love. Their cheerleading squad has brought a lot of energy for their team. Kane Bay, you see their student section in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. They've been loud and on their feet all night. Goose Creek leads 53 to 50, 52 with just a minute 15. As we see Kane Bay coming back on the floor, that press has caused some problems for the Gators in the second half. 
Goose Creek opts to put the ball in their senior's hand. It's going to be Dates and Capers for 84 feet. With just a minute to go, it'll be interesting to see. Goose Creek going to maybe hold. Try to, try to draw a foul. Got to be the best shot imaginable. You see, it's a really smart, savvy team. Kane Bay's going to play a lot of press defense. Dates to the basket. He draws the foul. With 43 to go. You thought, hey, no shot clock here in the state of South Carolina. Do they hold? They put the ball in number four's hand. They trust it with him. You see Jaquel Brown, the freshman. He's learned so much from a mentor. Like Elijah Dates. Dates with a smart play here. And he had Zylus Johnson by just a half a step. Relatively good defense. Kept him in front for the most part but dates you see it right there exhaustion but he is giving it 110 percent and he looks to seal the deal ice cold you can see him he just plays with such a swagger the moment's never too big for him he's worked for this unfazed as he Knocks down the first to extend it to a two-point lead with just 43 to go. He looks to make it a third. Yep, never a doubt. He extends the lead to 55 to 52, and Coach Sean McKean wants a timeout as his team trails by three. Now to 43 to go. Three to tie, two to cut it to one, and then a quick foul. What's the game plan here? What's Coach McKean telling his guys? You know, I, I think based on how they've played all game long, we could see if this go really any sort of way. Kane Bay has proven to be a team that can score in, in any aspect of the game, whether that's behind the three-point line or, or making a strong move to the basket and finishing through contact. Here, you know, I'd love to see a nice, strong... There's... Again, there's lots of time on the basket considering how quickly both of these teams have proven they can score tonight. I love going for three because they've been able to knock down a lot of shots here tonight and then just got to play strong defense on the opposite end. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's perhaps a play they're drawing up right now. But again, they've been competent in any, every aspect of the game here tonight. We could see it go either way. You got to imagine trailing by three, 43 seconds, potential region player of the year, Jordan McKean. He's a 39% three-point shooter. He's a 41% shooter from the floor. A wildly efficient score. He's averaging 16 a night. He's got just seven so far. Got to imagine they maybe draw up something for him. If it's not a quick two, got to imagine it's number one coming off a ball screen to knock down a furry. Yeah, McKean's a, a guy that has scored 20, 30 points in several games this year. It's one of those things McKean said he wanted his team to be more balanced in terms of everyone getting in on that score sheet. But a guy capable and competent of, of taking this one into his hands in this final 30 seconds spot on now they've surely been balanced tonight isaac smalls unable to get it to go a big boy rebound from gabriel white goose creek leads by three isaac smalls has to foul with just 24 to go goose creek heading to the line and they've got the ball in their guy's hand our player to watch tonight was justin Britt. But boy, has Elijah Dates shown up and played maybe one of the biggest games of his career. We had mentioned it. He had 20-plus in multiple games in the round ball this year. He was the round ball's most outstanding player. Well, tonight, when it mattered most and light was shining brightest, Elijah Dates has shown up to play. He knocks down the first. That's a big one. It makes it a two-possession game with just 24 to go. And it hasn't just been his scoring. In many cases, it was his ability to, to come away with a board when they needed it the most, or to pick up an offensive board when it, they needed to put points on the board and he, he didn't want a possession to, to end. So just a, an all-around skilled player beyond his ability to score. Absolutely. Kane Bay pushes. Zylus Johnson for three, unable to get it to go. Justin Britt with the rebound. Kane Bay has to foul again quickly. It'll be the two seniors from the charity stripe that look to run away with this region championship as there's just 14 to go. And if you're Kane Bay, it's looking a little bit like deja vu. Their last time they played Goose Creek, a close game up until the final, final stretch, but then they were forced to, to foul the Gators down the stretch and it expanded that 10-point that lead that the Gators ended up winning by. 
right now, five point lead. Absolutely, Justin Britt misses the first for Holy City hitting an air free throws. People are falling out of this gym right now. And I gotta tell you, it's a mistake. <laughs> Kane Bay's ability to score the basketball is not lost. And I'm telling you, Goose Creek's not too quite comfortable yet, as it's gonna be capers on the run. Goose Creek will press. It's McKean in the corner. It's a three. They cut it to three with just six to go. I'm telling you, hold your breath, folks. People are fouling out, and that's a mistake. When you got a guy like Jordan McKean, this game is never over. That's a huge three to cut it to 58 to 55. That's 10 on the night for McKean. A huge three. And I have to say, I'm kind of shocked by the amount of people that are leaving this gym right now, Jack. You can see here the David Ayla replay. McKean, corner three, nails. We told you he's a 39% free three-point shooter. He knows this game ain't over yet. We've seen Natalie in this second half. Kane Bay's press has given Goose Creek problems. Look for them to do everything in their power to pressure a turnover here. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Jack. And with seven seconds left, that's what you're going to need to do. And if you're going to foul, you need to do it quickly. It looks like the officials went over to the scores table and they added about 1.2 seconds on the clock. All time matters here late. As we see Goose Creek heading onto the floor, it's going to be Britt, Taylor, Brown, Dates, and White for Kane Bay. They're going to be looking for a steal. Dixon, Johnson, Capers, McKean, and Smalls. Brown will inbound with just 7.4 to go and a chance to win a region championship. Goose Creek will inbound. Britt frees it up. They're going to have to foul. Just 4.5 on the clock and a three-point lead. Justin Britt heads to the line to potentially put a dagger in this game. The most important Holy City heating and air free throws of the night are gonna happen here. We're gonna see number three, Landon Davis, checking in. Isaac Smalls checks out. Coach McKean putting his best three-point shooters on the floor because it's going to be a three that sends it to overtime. Britt, ice in his veins. The senior, he's, yeah, he's feeling himself. Coach Hall, he's not ready to celebrate yet, but boys, that bench is sided. As that free throw extends into a two-possession game and potentially out of reach for the Cobras. He knocks down both. He's battled injuries. He's battled cramps tonight. Those two free throws potentially to win a region championship. It's Goose Creek with a big win here at Cane Bay High School. 60 to 55. Coach Hall unfazed. Excited for his seniors. An incredible ball game here. My TD Charleston's high school hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. We'll be back with the presentation of today's Player of the Game trophy and our My TV Charleston High School Hoops Game of the Day. Natalie Spowell will be with Coach Hall just after this break. Say that again, Vince. Check, check, check. Mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. One, two, three. You got me? I don't I can't hear my. Love making you miserable. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> 
Natalie, you got me. Check one, check two, Natalie. You got me. Okay. I can cue her too, either way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into Cane Bay High School. My TV Charleston's high school hoops driven by Cruz Chevrolet. It's the number five team taking a triumphant win against the number six Cane Bay Cobras. We're going to kick it down live to Natalie Spollett. He's with the winning team and winning coach Blake Hall as they now control their destiny to win a region championship. Well, coach, so much riding on a game like this. Region implications on the line. How did your team get this done? Uh, see, you know, Guys stepping up, you know, like Brandon Burgess here making two free throws, yeah. haven't played all game. Yeah. 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 Makes, makes a big three. So, I mean, the seniors the seniors wanted this more than anything. They, they, they wanted to earn an opportunity for region play. So, great atmosphere. Cane Bay fans brought it tonight. So, I'm proud of the guys that the response when the event kind of went sideways. They had a great response tonight. So many guys stepped up in so many huge moments. Brandon Burgess, Elijah Day. It's so many guys that deserve this trophy and to be our player of the game. But as a team, how did this work in your favor tonight? What was the game changer here? I, I mean, I go back to Brandon. I thought Brandon was, was a, you know, be, being cold, hasn't played the first 24 minutes of the game, comes in, hits two free throws, and hits a big three. And the final of the game is five points, and he scores those five points. So just him being ready to play when he hasn't played for 20 minutes and making plays when he got in, that kind of sums up these seniors. It's everybody kind of takes up the slack when they need it. So. Well, we talked about the passion of this team. You said when they show up and they play hard, they are a handful for everyone. How would you assess that aspect of this performance tonight? Yeah, I mean, they know it. I, I think they have a chance to be great, and when they're locked in and, and – have poise laid on offense and, and play with, you know, passion on defense, they can be great. So I'm looking forward to see how we progress towards the end of the season. What does this mean as we progress through the season, coming away with a win like this? Hopefully, you know, they re respect the next opponent. They enjoy this to midnight, and then we next week we try to get better and then and see what the playoffs do. Well, like I said, this is a hard trophy to give away to anyone here tonight, but we went with Elijah Dates, 18 points from him. Really progressed and performed in every aspect of the game. How would you assess his performance tonight? Great. That's what seniors are supposed to do. And, yep. he, and he came through and did it tonight. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, coach. Guys, enjoy this. You all put your hands on that. And you can see there our player of the game, Elijah Dates, the senior. He passes it off to BB, Brandon Burgess. You heard Coach Hall mention it. A five-point win from Goose Creek. Burgess didn't play the entire game, and he steps up. He knocks down two huge free throws and a three on the very next possession. A pure indictment of this entire Goose Creek roster who's played together for a very long time. He had mentioned it, nine seniors, eight of which he's had in this program since the sixth grade. But that guy, Elijah Dates, a stone-cold killer this evening with 18 points tonight. But... It wouldn't be remiss to say an incredible battle, an incredible moment for the McKean family as Jordan battled his tail off. A really good Cane Bay team gave it their all, but it was Goose Creek at the end of the night. Justin Britt battled injuries. Elijah Dates hit shots from the parking lot. And Coach Blake Hall continues winning ways for the Goose Creek Raiders. On behalf of Natalie Spollett, Jack Galongshaw, and our incredible craft and stew, staff and crew who make incredible nights like this possible. We'll see you next week at Lucy Beckham for our finale of High School Hoops.